Hi, it's Chef Rick, and today I'm making onion bhajis. We'll start this with split red lentils because they need to be soaked for at least 20 minutes before using. So that's some red split lentils just in cold water. Now I'm making onion bhajis, which are going to use onions, obviously. Pull off the root, take off the top. But this is the first time you've probably seen me do this one where we're also going to take off the bottom, take off the root. So the minute that comes off, uh, there is potential for tears at this point. You know, just suck it up, deal with it. But basically chop the uh, both ends off the onion, peel them, and then you'll be left with these uh, perfect onion halves. We're just gonna slice down. You don't want them too thin, nor do you want them too thick so they don't cook. So I think I'll show you a side of one of the slices. You can see that's, uh, that's about how thick you, you want them. So all of your onions together. Best way to do this is to prep all the veg um, in advance. So we're gonna use half of a green pepper. Of course, all the quantities will be down in the uh, description below. So we're just gonna uh, chop pepper in half, clean out all the insides and just slice it lengthways. Nice and thin on this one, as thin as you can do it with a knife. And then we'll take each of those lengths and chop them again in half. So you've got lots of lovely um, green pepper pieces. Like that. Oh, and the lid as well. I was looking at it and I thought, whilst that lid's there, the, other, the rest of it went in a salad, so I thought I'll use that lid. Um, one red potato. It's a lovely and smooth inside. Slice it nice and thin. Uh, lengthways. Like a, like a thick crisp. But, uh, it's basically as thin as you can do it with a knife. Uh, and then t take each of those and slice them into little matte sticky chips by going the other way. And that's it, that's how you've made these little uh, little chipstick bits from your potato. Some green chilies, I'll just take the top off them and slice them as thin as I can, leaving all seeds and all inside in there. These uh, these will just give the, just, just a little bit of heat, I'm not gonna blow your head off, but. Uh, and then some coriander. So I take out the main stalks, although you probably don't need to, I often just do take out the main stalks. Give it a really good chop down. That's a handful of coriander, as we always say. Um, and just work your way through it, just going back and forth until this is lovely and fine and uh, finely chopped. You don't want it to be over chopped so it becomes dark and goes into like a paste. You just want it to be like that. So now we're gonna put everything together. That's the onions with the potato. The green pepper, the green chilies, the coriander, uh, the red split lentils. Now you can see I'm just there. I've, I've, I've sieved off most of the water, so it's uh, I'm making sure that we don't get any of the water in the in there as well. That's the lentils. Uh, they give a really nice crunch on each of the onion barges. Some turmeric powder, some curry powder, and some fengeric uh, seeds. And that is a large teaspoon, a large tablespoon of garlic and ginger paste, mixed garlic and ginger paste. Once again, all the quantities will be in the description below. And I start to mix this round very quickly, realizing that there's not enough room in that bowl to, to properly mix it. So I found my biggest, uh, biggest pot and I'm just mixing it in there just because you can really get everything nice and covered and without splashing it and spilling it everywhere. I could have probably done this in that other bowl, but it would have just taken forever. And this way you can be way more vigorous. Uh, for once of a better word. In go four eggs, it looks way more than four eggs because it looks like it's six egg yolks, but two of them were double yolkers, so they were just four large eggs. And now mixing that around again. Uh, you don't have to use your hands if you don't want to. Uh, you do totally get a much better feel for exactly what's going on. So if you just don't like stuff on your hands, wear, wear gloves. Or, but you could easily do this with a spoon, a wooden spoon, a metal spoon of, of any kind. Just make sure it's all nice and mixed in because of the, the, the eggs in there. I just think with your hands, you're in so much more control. That's 100 grams of gram flour. Um, in total in this recipe we had 200 grams but I just decided I'm going to add this 100 grams at a time just to see because I've made this uh, in times before where it's been too loose and also where it's been way too kind of sticky there was too much um, in there so I'm just adding this 100 grams at a time so I'm checking it every single time is it is it sticking together it needed another 100 grams uh, this actually got the mixture perfect for me, but you can go back and forth with 100 grams. Uh, the person who inspired this, Latif inspired, one of my favorite chefs on all of YouTube, he just does it by a cup at a time. So uh, I just do it by 100 grams. Keeps it nice and uniform. 
So I'm mixing it around and I can feel that it's it's sticky, but it's not clumping all together. Uh, it's still loose enough. You can see that kind of consistency. Uh, and now I did can put it back into the uh, into the original bowl I was using just for neatness. I put some um, cling film over it and just put this in the fridge ready for when I want to use it. You can use that obviously immediately, but I was doing them later on the evening. Oil. Uh, at 160 degrees. Now what I'm doing is I'm forming these into balls and I'm squeezing out some of the juice without squeezing the actual ball itself. You don't want it really tight and compact uh, but you do want it to remain in that in that ball shape of course. So what I'm doing is I'll keep my the, the insides of my hand how can I describe this like I'm, I'm letting the liquid just leave between my fingers and I'm not squeezing a tight tight ball. So you can see as I squeeze it, I'm not putting actual pressure on the ball itself, more just making sure the, the, the main bit of that liquid leaves. And then just carefully lowering it into the oil. That oil is on at uh, 170 degrees. Obviously, if you've got a fry like this, amazing, you can control the temperature really well. Uh, or just use a thermometer in, uh, in a pan of oil. Or get your oil to the point where if you drop in one bit of onion, just pull out one bit of onion from there, drop the onion stick in there. It should react how it's doing Not now, not violently, just a nice boil, not a nice like bubble of the oil. And whilst I'm dropping these and you know what, I'm going to ask you if you can like my videos, it, only if you like them of course, please click like at the bottom. And also if you don't subscribe to me, uh, please click the subscribe button at the bottom. It's completely free and it really helps me out, so I appreciate that. Here goes the third one. And now we're just going to watch these, just going to, just going to monitor them, make sure that they're cooking properly, make sure they're not overdone. Don't be afraid to uh, to get in there using a metal spoon, of course, um, as opposed to my plastic spatula. These have been in there probably for about 10 minutes. You can tell this is this is getting to the colour that we want. Again, don't be afraid, move them around. Um, if all of a sudden, if you drop them in, you can tell your oil's too hot, so if you just drop them in and after literally two seconds they are that sort of color that the oil was way too hot which is why you'll drop in a small test piece first I didn't drop in a test piece because this is a fryer so the fryer is consistent on the temperature and these are about done that's the color you're looking for uh, again they've probably had in, in total yeah they probably have had about 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 10 to 12 minutes in the uh, in the fryer you can see now that obviously they've bubbled up to the surface uh, and now take them out put them onto a clean uh, piece of kitchen paper uh, I use tea towels like this. I go through tea towels. So it's ridiculous. So uh, don't use these. Don't use well. Use a tea towel if you want, but also it's best if you just use some uh, some kitchen roll, kitchen paper, just so they can uh, the oil can drain off. Uh, that's your onion bhajis, pretty much made. So I've served these here with a nice uh, mint raita, some mango chutney, a lime pickle in the middle, and uh, I grabbed some of the Scotch bonnet pickle as well, which I'll put a link to the video there. Uh, you always say that you always want you want to see me tasting these things, so that's a absolutely perfect Indian restaurant style onion bhaji. One of my favourite things in all of uh, Indian food. Put like uh, a little bit of mint right on there. Have a taste. Of course, it's incredible. It's hot. It's uh, it's got a bit of crunch to it. It's uh, obviously full of beautiful flavours. It's not overspiced. It tastes doesn't taste like something you bought in a supermarket, it tastes like something you've had in an Indian restaurant, so amazing. A bit of mango in there. And that's it, onion bhajis. Uh, really easy. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate every single viewer, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.